Property Graduate is proudly sponsored by Surtax Accounting. Property Graduate is the show for aspiring property developers and investors to win a life-changing opportunity that money can't buy. The prize is twofold, forming a property company with renowned property guru John Howard and owning 50% of the shares. John is one of the most experienced property developers and investors in the UK today. With almost four decades experience in the industry, he's been there and done that, having purchased and sold around 4,000 homes, apartments and developments. This savvy businessman is putting £1 million of his own money into the new company so the winner can buy and develop a property. With a 50% stake in it, they'll automatically receive a 50% share of the profit and potentially have John as a business partner for life. You're watching Property Graduate. Welcome to the series finale of Property Graduate. We've seen our 14 potentials whittle down to our final three, Molly, Victoria and Elise, who will have to present a deal that they think will work for John and the panel in a bid to become Property Graduate 2023. Ladies, good morning and welcome back to London. Our all ladies final. Yeah. What do you think of that? It's great. Fantastic. And, and, and at the end of the day, you are the best three candidates without a shadow of a doubt. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity to have a company with me on a 50-50 basis where I inject a million pounds into that company and you have no risk whatsoever in the first deal. All the risk is on me. I'm relying on one of you to come up with a very, very good deal. Good luck today. Bring your A game. I know you will and let the best person win. Thank you. Molly, here you are in the final. Someone put you up to this and, and, and you've reached the end stage. I'm very grateful <laughs> that they put me up to it. But yes, I'm just um, I'm a bit nervous today. Uh, very, very excited. So um, yeah, just happy to be here today. And what are you looking to do with your deal to impress the judges and of course, mostly John? I think the bottom line comes down to profit. Um, and I think that's a, an important factor um, in all of this. So if I get my figures right and my build costs, uh, hopefully, you know, I can, I, can, I can get a decent profit out of this. Are you excited, nervous? What are you feeling right now? Excited. I think talking to you now, I'm excited. This morning driving here, I was very, very nervous. So we've got Molly coming in now. She's coming in first. Uh, it's always good to get it out of the way properly, isn't it, if you're Molly? <laughs> I don't know, but... Um... Very impressive in the first two rounds, Kirsty, wasn't she? She's very calm and collected, yeah. I like the calmness and she's got some experience as mm. well, which um, I think helps on the whole. Yeah, and she was strong on her numbers mm. in uh, round two. She was, she got Had them right. laid she, out well. She's about the, one of the few that pleased you, Fiona, I believe. <laughs> so uh, let's get her in and, and see if she's on form. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it's a deal that I found in Lower Stoft. I've mm -hmm. looked at this area previously and I quite liked it. I think it's, it's, got, a, it's got a wonderful regen plan that's going on uh, for Lower Stoft. So I thought oh, I'd like to look at that area. Mm -hmm. And um, it's an area that I find that um, prices were a bit cheaper to where I live <laughs> in London. So I found this property quite interesting. Did a site visit with uh, the architect and a building surveyor just to see what we could do with it. We had a little walk around the high street it's currently vacant. It's recently vacant. It's on the market for 325,000. We've had offer accepted at 280,000 mm -hmm. subject to planning. So we've got a little bit of time to play with things in terms of getting um, a downstairs tenant just so it can start generating income to the building. Um, we've looked at plans of what we can do um, in terms of the actual buildings. When you look at it, it's, it's quite a nice looking building, but it's how, how can I add value to this? So I think the best thing for this building would be to shorten the commercial um, unit at the bottom and put some residential above. So that's what the plan is for this. And then it'll be a build to sell, I think, on this one. What's the current tenant mix in, in Lower Stoff and where would the demand come from for that ground floor commercial? It's kind of away from the centre heart of the actual Britain centre. So it's, it's only literally a five minute walk. 
just across the road further down you've got lots of um, eateries that are opening up now so, so kind of smaller restaurants and cafes that are opening up a lot of them are privately owned you've got um, just M&S down the road as well you've got Sports Direct so you've got a couple of the big players but I think for where this building is situated and where it is I think it would be kind of it, I, I, we wouldn't really attract attract a really big um, covenant in there but it would kind of be like a, a mamas and papas type thing really but um, just looking at the low stuff plan and just talking to the agent there, there's, um, again, been a bit of interest with these pop-up shops that are coming up now with eateries mm. and restaurants, yeah. and that's what they're really trying to fill this town with yeah. now, so it can just bring footfall back to... And not even eateries. I mean, Sheen's just announced pop-up yeah. shops in London in, and yeah. stuff like that. So you said it's recently empty. What's this current use class? Is it sui generis? It's um, not sui generis, no. It's a class um, E, I believe. It's for um, um, children's and that okay. kind of stuff. Good news and bad news. Good news is that I know Lerstoff very well. Bad news is, sadly, uh, Lerstoff is it's got the highest amount of deprivation in the whole of Suffolk. The good news is I know Peter Aldis. Do you know Peter Aldis? No. You should do. He's the MP. Okay. So uh, Peter's done a wonderful job getting a lot of grants available for Lerstoff. He's been a really, really good local MP. Uh, I've known Peter 30 odd years. So have you investigated the grants that could be available on this property? So we have looked at the plan. We've looked at the Waveney local plan. Yep. And in there, we did read that there are grants available, but we haven't attempted okay. to okay. secure so anything yet. I'm disappointed to hear that because um, there's the town fund, which is 25 million, which is uh, Peter's got that granted to them by the, by the government. That's for some towns, not cities. Uh, there's a levelling up fund, which I think they've got some money for as well. They're just spending millions on this new bridge, uh, to, a third bridge, I think, to go over uh, over the river there. So, you know, there is a lot going for Lerstoff in that respect. However, it's still challenging. Who the hell are you going to sell 14 flats to in this position? I know where it is in Lerstoff. It's not a great location. Who are you going to sell 14 flats to? So talking to the agent already, I mean, he was very keen to, to take this on as rental. I bet he um, is. So yeah. he, he was very keen to take on the rental thing. So when I first looked at it, I thought, right, we could build to rent. Um, but when we looked at the figures, yeah. we actually just thought it would probably be better to build to sell. So I spoke to the agent again and I just said, you know, what kind of position would we be in? And he said, looking at the one, the mix of one and two bed, he mm. said they would be, you know, your first time buyers mm. and people that want to stay in the area. Um, those people so they're a mix of one and two bedrooms and, and what sort of and, and what sort of level in terms of value does he put on them um so we again very conservative figures we went in about mm. 110 for one bedroom apartments yeah. and around about the 160 for the two bed apartments yeah. the two beds are slightly larger and they are they are good units um, but so you, you, you have we have that choice whether we want to do the build to send whether that would be a better strategy in the end or actually look again and say you know is there a way that we would do build to rent and we keep building at the moment with no help to buy I'd be very dubious whether you can sell fourteen flats in this position in Lowestoft without any help that's what that's what concerns me uh, Kirsty yeah I think exits concern me in in the current market and our inability to forecast the current market so mm. a seventeen month project for 14 flats in and out. How realistic do you think that is? So we took the building surveying team with us uh, when we went to have a look. And when he looked at the building, obviously he was looking at you know foundations and how high we could go and a time scale. So they were looking at things and turning things around quite quickly in, in the 12 month period. And we're looking at light steels for this. And it's something that I learned quite new. Um, you know, you wouldn't look at a timber frame. They say, you know, light steels, well, they would do a lot of the work pre going mm. out to site. And that way, it would kind of free up a lot of the time. They literally just, he explained it to me like an Ikea pack. They literally go to site, everything is ready, mm. and they put together. It all sounds so simple, doesn't it, Molly? It does. I mean, <laughs> you know, I was fortunate and, to go and visit one of their sites where yeah. they did this. It was, yeah. it looks quite... It looks, but. yeah. I've got, I've got, for me, nothing is simple when it comes to construction. Nothing Especially is when you're converting an existing building mm. and, and it's old. So as a comparison... Some of the projects that we've done over the last couple of years have been smaller, mm -hmm. right, you know, upwards into four, six flats, and mm -hmm. that's taken nine, 12 months, yeah. and you're doing 14. So even if, even if you bring the steels in, mm -hmm. and, and it's the exit in this market, because like you say, the, the first time buyers, everyone's struggling to get yeah. lending. No one wants to lock themselves yeah. in at the I moment. So yeah. I think that is probably the biggest challenge is mm -hmm. exiting. And the other thing I don't like is you're, whole, you're keeping some of the facade 
I did that once or twice. Second time, the facade fell down. So because you're taken away, you know, it's very dangerous to, 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 to try and keep a facade at the front and get rid of the rest of it at the back. It's challenging. You know, this is a really challenging project, Molly. And I know you've done other projects. I'm not saying you haven't. Uh, and I've done more complicated ones. But this is quite challenging in a very challenging market in a, in a town that is, you know, struggling, to be quite blunt. It's, get, it's improving. I agree with you. I yeah. noticed you put a 7% contingency in. Do you think that's going to be sufficient? Well, we, we spoke to the broker, they kind of go on a 5%, which I just thought was really, really low. So yeah, I thought if I hit it between the 5 and 10, that's why I went for well, the 7 Well, most banks are going to so, want 10, see 10%. Yeah. So I, I just kind of went a yeah, little bit. Yeah, I understand that. And did you consider whether any capital allowances might be available for the building? Um, it's on the to-do list for capital allowances. I know mm. that you do like them, yeah, but um, we, we haven't looked at the capital allowances just yet. We just um, thought, well, let's, let's, let's secure it and see if it's a, if it's a go or not. So if they're ground floor tenant, I would just want to come back to that for a moment because if it's going to be pop-ups or restaurants or um, in the valuation based on um, the agent's pricing, we've got that in to capitalise at 7.5%. Now that would be a brand in, in this location. And it was interesting because we did question him when we were standing mm. inside the building and we just said, you know, I think we'd look at it around about the 10%. And he said, oh, no, you know, what's going on in this area with the London North? He said you would kind of get seven and a half. He's good, there. isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He's did good. You, he, he He's is, good. Have you spoken to another commercial agent who's not the selling agent? We haven't. The agent that we were working with on this, they take quite a large the proportion of lower stoft in the area. So um, I think I we, know who they are. Yeah, yeah. so we, we spoke to them. Um, you know, we kind of just gave yeah. them benefit of doubt. But I think course. you need a second opinion. Yeah. How many deals did you look at prior to, to settling on this one as the one that you'd bring to John? Probably about four or five. You know, some, some were a bit more simpler, some were a lot more complex. And I just thought this is middle road. I quite no. like it. It is that challenge. What financial commitment have you made? So no financial commitment just yet. They've literally, we've, they just had the offer accepted. We had it accepted. Um, and how are you going to secure that, so, that, that um, option? If I needed to, we would use our own funds if I felt that it was something that we wanted to pursue. But the agent has said that he would give us some time because the um, vendor is actually not in the country. So he said we would just work with you. And I think talking to them, I don't think anyone else is looking at the building. So I'm not too precious about thinking I've got to put something down to secure no. it. Mm. Um, Molly, because... That might tell you something. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. So as an it individual might not, seller. It might not. It might not. Mm. You might, you know, you might have... Left and they have owned the building for it. some time now, but it's got to the point where now they're saying with the with the tenants, um, especially with the, the barn cafe, they closed down quite quickly. Um, they, You know, the model wasn't right. The tenant needs to be right that goes in there. So I think they've just got to the point where they said they didn't want to manage commercial tenants. So have you got, have you got heads of terms written up? Uh, not yet, no. Okay, no. so that We're would be... I mean, it's, it's great that you've come yeah. and you've actually got that I far... Agree. For getting an offer accepted mm -hmm. so you know great it sounds all verbal at the moment you've got a verbal offer accepted subject it's in, planning. yes so it's in writing but yes it's it's uh, it's verbal we haven't exchanged get it in the thing. heads of terms writing yeah not just an email <laughs> um in terms of in what interest rate have you put um in terms of the borrowings we were looking around about the seven percent yeah that that will not be anywhere near enough not not now unfortunately yeah. So the finance which cost is, I put in there was a hundred thousand, yeah, but which I think it'll be yeah, more I mean, than it's, it's just that. so difficult now with the banks, um, even with yeah. the project that we're working with currently. So yeah. I mean, a lot of it is, you know, I'm open to JVs and partners yeah. that kind of come in. Yeah, so but, I think but, that's they, also but, but they but they still need their money. Yeah. To, I mean, I put the money in, but I, st I still want a return on it, and you know, and that's just how it works. Um, mm. Yeah. So do you think? Um, so what was it on the market for? Three twenty-five. Yeah. Okay. So they've they've. You know they've come down a bit, not a lot. Mm. So is there more room in that? Do you think? If you if you go so back, so I went in a lot meeting. lower. I did go in a lot lower, mm. and they came back and just said no. Um, so then I upped it and I said, you know, two eighty would be the final um, price. But again, with that subject too, so that I can do my full due diligence and actually understand is it a viable project or not. So my gut feeling is it probably needs to be sub two hundred. Yeah. I mean, again, it's once you've done your due diligence, I can then go to the agent and say, well, these are my figures and this is why I'm offering. It's not because I've just made up the figures, but this mm. is why. I'm, so. Well, my question is, you, you've put an offering on this and it's been accepted. And if you don't win today, uh, I'm sure you hope that you do. Are you still going to proceed with this deal? I will still proceed in terms of doing all my due diligence around it because I think you just learn a lot. Um, I really did like Lowestoft as an area. Yeah. Um, 
So I think you're like Lurstoff, can I stop you there? You love Southwold. <laughs> Southwold is 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 the best seaside resort in the whole of the UK. Funnily enough, I've just bought Lloyds Bank there. That's funny, isn't it? To oh. convert into holiday use. I like I do like Southwold. But I it's very special. That. But of course, when there's a very special area, normally the next area up isn't so good. And this is exactly where Lowestoft is. Yeah. is. Yeah. So I mean it has got future. Um, you know, it has got future development, I think. Yes. I think in years to come, it will be one of those towns that people do visit. It'll have a lot more footfall. It's all about timing. Timing. So things. I think yeah. if I could just play around with it a little bit more mm. and see where yeah. I am. Okay, good. Well, Molly, thank you very much for, for presenting to us. Um, impressive. Thank, thank you very you. much indeed. And we'll see you later. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Molly. Thank you. Thank you. Molly, how did it go? How do you feel now? I'm relieved. I'm glad that's over. Uh, I think it went okay. How are you with the numbers with your overall deal? The numbers came up good, um, but there's lots of risks in uh, the number crunching. So, I mean, if it works the plans, the numbers are good, but there's lots of hurdles that we need to cross to get to those numbers. Did the judges catch you out on anything? Capital allowances. <laughs> Fiona likes capital allowances, uh, and it was a part of the project that uh, I hadn't looked at so, yet. all over. How are you feeling right now? Good, but nervous again, because uh, you know we'll find out who the, who the finalist is. So I'm feeling a little bit nervous now, but um, excited, but relieved it's over. Uh, I like her composure. I like that she has an answer to most questions. I like that she's humble enough to say, yeah, it might not work. Yeah. So I, I like all of those things. Mm. I don't think it's, it's the best deal in the world. No. no. Either, it's a difficult area probably a bit early for this area but yes uh, well analyzed she's a bit unlucky because i know it so well you can probably chip the purchase price a bit when you go back with your field due diligence yeah. but it'll be grant funding that make the difference totally we all need mm. to know is there a grant available on that i'll, I'll text peter orders this afternoon and ask him how's that wow. can't beat that can you so you know so you know <laughs> yeah next one please okay <laughs> victoria you're looking pretty in pink today how are you feeling um, I have butterflies, but it's a mixture of excitement and nerves, I think. With your deal that you're going to be presenting to the judges and of course to John, what are you looking to achieve from it? I just want to show them that I can think about stuff in a certain way. Um, I've talked about the kind of deal I want to do. I'm presenting something that I've not talked about what I want to do. It's completely different. So I'm just trying to show them that I can be methodical in the way I look at things, that I can be detailed in the way I analyse and just show them the way that I would approach a deal. Not necessarily this is the one that we're going to do. If we did, that would be amazing. If we don't, it's more just showcasing to them, this is how my mind works. Winning this, how would it change your life? I think it would be amazing. I think it'd be so much fun to work with John for a start. Um, and I think the contacts that he has and the kind of tutelage that we'd get from him would be great. And also I think for me it's accountability because I know in my head I want to go on and do things and I want to you know, continue building my portfolio and progress in my property career, if that's the right word to call it. Um, but I think it's, it's so easy to have excuses and have distractions. Whereas I think having like a committed company with him and a joint venture with him I think for me, that would just really be the accountability that I need. And I think I would just find it really fun. I don't really know what else to say. I think it would just be really fun. Speaking to you now, I feel really pumped. I'm like, yeah, let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Hi, Victoria. Hi. Would you like just to tell us about this deal and then we'll get asking you lots of questions? Yep. So the deal that I'm presenting to you today is a residential property for sale in Wandsworth in London. It's currently a three story, four bed townhouse that's on for 1.125 million. The current owners are downsizing. They've owned it since the 1980s and they're just ready to move on. The plan would be to buy it, extend all three floors, split into flats and then sell it. The location is within a mile or the property itself is located within a mile of three underground and overground train stations and it's really close to Wimbledon Park, so it's a really desirable location. The deal appeals to me for numerous reasons. Uh, the London location gives it a high GDV, making it solid profit. There's a large pool of potential end buyers at the end, given where it is and the kind of people that would be looking to sell for. The original footprint of the house is quite large and it has a decent sized garden, so it will meet criteria conversion, which I'll come to later on. Um, the conversion can be done under permitted development. There will be planning for the title split at the end, but the conversion can be done under permitted development, meaning we can get boots on the ground straight away and get going with it. Uh, there's been planning permission granted nearby for multiple flat conversions, showing that precedent has been set for this kind of conversion, so we shouldn't have any issues there. 
There are multiple exit strategies for it, and it's not an obvious development project from investors. Uh, the numbers wouldn't work particularly well as a buy-to-let as is, so I feel there's less competition buying on entry. And because we're only creating three units, there's not going to be any significant marketing costs. It will fall under the estate agent and photos, so actually risk is quite minimal. It's a challenging project for me, given that I haven't done flat conversions before. However, I'm comfortable enough with the elements of it. I've done extensions, I've done internal reconfigurations, HMO conversions. So from my perspective, it is more challenging than what I've done, but I won't require loads of hand-holding from you, John, because I know you're... Victoria, you're going to be my partner if you win. You'll get all the support and help you need. Uh, are you sure about the permitted development to three flats? Yeah. And uh, what about the thermal insulation of the building? Because uh, I haven't seen it. There's no EPC in here or... No, so that would be something that we would get at the end for the EPC. Within the professional fees, I've allowed for like air testing, soil testing, acoustics, all that kind of stuff would be included in that. With the permitted development, the ground floor would require um, prior approval for the extension of that, and then the two above it would just be under permitted development. Now, I'm not very good at PD. Okay. I always ask my planning consultant. Um, but I'm not convinced this is... PD. Kirsty, are you? It didn't immediately spring to mind as a PD no. for me. Why so let me explain yeah. how it works. So yeah. we're going to do it in stages. So the first thing is we would extend the ground floor. So that would go out three and a half metres. Right. That can be done under permit development with prior approval. Right. Once that's done, we can then extend above it because you can do, since it changed in 2020, you can kind of raise up levels. So we can then do the second floor and then we can do the top floor. But still as a single dwelling though? Yep, as a, still as a household application, all as one dwelling, and then once it would just be one large house, and then at that point we apply for flats. Are we going to get planning for three flats here or not? Yes. Right, in that case, why don't we just go for the three flats and stop all this faffing around? It's going to take you a year to do all that. A year's interest is a lot of money. What's your estimated time scale? So the build would be around about six months, and then hopefully the whole thing would be done and dusted within 18. I think okay. 18 months is realistic. I'm just looking at um, survey and searches of a thousand pounds and I thought that was a little bit light. We can push that up. I've got a contingency in there um, of 10% of the cost that can go up. Yeah, also... we, we like the contingency, didn't we? Yeah. 10%. We thought that was sensible. I've based the ground floor extension on 1,500 pounds a square metre, the first floor extension on 2,000 a square metre, the top on 2,500 a square metre, and then I spoke to an architect and a builder in London who said for the internal conversion, that would be a thousand per square metre. Have you factored in any decrease though, Victoria? I have not, but there are three exit strategies. So if the market were to suddenly change and we weren't able to sell for what we mm -hmm. want, what there are do? two other exits. So you can either, as they're in flats already, we can either just put them on a self-managed buy-to-let on a long-term AST. The cash flow isn't amazing on the three bed, but it is still positive. Does it and what I call wash its face? Yes, it covers thing. itself. And I'm really conservative with my numbers like that. So I always yep. build in a huge contingency, which we won't be needing. Um, so we could always take a bonus at the end of the year. So John wanted 30% return on costs. What did this So that's what I, I wasn't clear on because the brief said a deal that we would do yeah. rather than one yeah. specifically with your you. criteria. Oh, okay. yeah. But so you do want to win the competition, I yeah. take it. So, say again? But you do want to win the competition. Oh, 100%. It. This is 20% profit on costs, yep. which is 16% profit on GDV. Yep. Um, I have calculated if you wanted 30, the purchase price would be lower. How much lower? Obviously. Um, so if you wanted 30%, the purchase price would be 900. Mm -hmm. Whereas to get the 20%, it's 1.01. Um, .01. How long has it been on the market for? Just since February. Long what, time do you think, what do you think the demand is for, for the property in, it, in its current state? I've spoken to the agent. There's no offers on it as yet because it's a four bed and it is quite a high price point. There is always going to be demand in London, but I don't think it's flying off the shelves. Mm -hmm. It doesn't appeal to investors because the buy to set numbers don't work. As I said, it's not an obvious conversion and you need quite a large family to fill a four bed. So based on what we've just talked about, what where would you go in with your offer on this one? So to make the 20% work, it would be 1.01 million. If you wanted the 30% would go in at 900. But where would you go? I would go for 20% because I that's what's comfortable for me. I feel that that's a fair price for the seller. Fair, fair, fair. Listen, Victoria, <laughs> uh, Victoria. We're All's not, not fair in love and war. I would offer whatever John <laughs> wants me to we're offer. We're not, that's not the answer. <laughs> the, the, you know, this is business. Yeah. You know, I don't care if it's fair to them or not. It's only fair to us if we get it for the bottom price, the very, very bottom we get it for. 
Otherwise, you come to me and say, well, of course, John, I've been very fair with them. Uh, very, very fair. I could have got it for 100,000 less, but hey, no, why would I want to do that? Take, I would take them on board. And I'm not I'm not uncomfortable offering low. My buy to let portfolio is all it. hugely low offer. So I'm not uncomfortable doing that. Good. You've got to get your ruthless head on. Have you considered just refurbishing the house and putting it back on the market? Simple, 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 quick, quick, quick. And how many deals did you look at? To, to come to this deal? Um, so I looked at a couple of hundred, just kind of top level, because I was originally looking for commercial to resi, which is what I've told you all along that I was looking yeah. at doing. Um, I didn't like any of the profits in those. So then in terms of in this detail, this level, it looked about 15, and this one was the best one. Because there's so many, this is, I perceive this is kind of like a needle in a haystack, because to, to convert a house into three flats in this borough, the original footprint has to be over 130 square meters, which yep. this one is. Post conversion, the garden has to remain at 15 yep. meters squared, which yep. this is. Um, the council under the London plan have got the kind of new house initiative and they are really promoting small sites under 0 0.25 hectares, which this is within 800 meters of the tube station, which this is. It ticks every single box and a yep. lot of them didn't have one or other of those. And Victoria, to be fair to you, that's all very impressive information mm. that I wouldn't know. So, isn't it? Simple. Yeah, I didn't know that either. No. <laughs> so, you've taught us all something this morning. Um, I'm just surprised because in my area, it's a, you don't have to, it's a 15 square meter garden. It's normally a lot bigger that you need to retain. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's interesting. It's quite small. It's, I've, yeah. I've put an exit in there from the council. Yeah. We thought, we thought your, your proposal was very well put together, didn't we? Yeah. Thank you. Very good. I don't think there's nothing glaringly obvious that's. No. that's that's no, missed. I agree. Um, Fiona, any more questions? Um, just, uh, I think a couple of hundred deals that you looked through it, and this this was the one that you wanted to do is interesting to note. And uh, if you didn't, uh, if you weren't successful today and didn't win the competition, would you still go ahead and try and pull this deal off yourself? I would try and raise finance for it. Yeah. So I'd go to the bank and I would try and get other private lending on it. Yeah. Because I think. I think there's a really good opportunity. The fact that 0 0.2 miles down the road, this exact thing has been done. Obviously, I've put in additional money for curb appeal because like, I would want that to look more beautiful. Um, but I personally feel that this is a really unique opportunity because of all the boxes that it ticks. Okay. So I would still want to yeah. do it. Okay. Victoria, thank you very much. We'll see you later on. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you. How did it go? I don't know. It's really hard. They they kind of 50-50. So half half of the things they were like, oh, no, 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 that's wrong. And then half of them were like, oh, this was really good. Yeah, I really like that. It's a really hard one to call. I think it was, could go either way. Now it's all over. How are you actually feeling? I'm a bit sad. I've really enjoyed the process. I've really liked like hanging out with the other ladies and like, yeah, it's been, it's been a nice focus. It's been good accountability to be consistent and be doing stuff. So yeah, a bit sad, but I guess... Kind of a bit relieved as well. It's not like that black cloud of like, oh, I need to make sure that I've got everything sorted. So yeah, mixed. Didn't have quite as much to say for herself in the third <laughs> round as she has the last two, Kirsty. But no, still and a lot, I quite a lot to say. I thought she actually let herself down on a couple of things, which are ringing bells for me. I don't know if okay. they are for you. Which were, oh, well, I want to offer a fair price. Well, yeah. mm. well, you're in this for business and profit, not for agree. offering fair price. It's not, not that I'm saying you should, you know, you don't need yeah. to be unethical about it, but- Unethical, that, what does that mean? Um, <laughs> out of all the contestants we've had this year, I thought she was the sort of real sharp, the sharp- I thought know, she'd be more bullish. Bullish and a bit more, yeah. I can get it for this. I'm gonna, you know, and she was a mm. little bit, perhaps just nerves or just, just trying to be fair. And, you know, it's on national television at the end of the day. Yeah, you don't yeah. wanna come across as a me, Not probably. like us, no. So, I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah, she's well presented. So, I mean, she's well presented. Articulate, you know. Yeah, the one thing that, that I was disappointed about was that she hadn't thought about of it just being uh, refurbished as a house. I think she was trying to show, you know. What she can do. What she yeah, can do. I see, and, what, I see and, that. and she definitely did that. You know, yeah, she, she did. She's definitely done yeah. her research. She yeah. knows her stuff. Yeah. She knows she how know, to do it. She knew know. all about the gardens, so, didn't she, yeah. and the spaces. Uh, that's Victoria. And now we've got someone else coming in. How have you found the process? The challenge was uh, quite a challenge uh, uh, part for me, but uh, overall, I think it has been like a process of learning, uh, you know, about ourselves, about the judges, the, what they like, what they don't like, uh, and also like stepping out of the comfort zone to look for deals which I usually don't do myself. Winning this, what impact would it have on your life? How life-changing would it be? 
having John's mentorship in a way, you know, like maybe like shadowing him or going on site, seeing what, how he's uh, doing his projects and learning from like by being there and doing, I think it will be an amazing opportunity. I always uh, tend to think of myself like the person who I learn best if I do it. Say you did win and you know you find your, your deal and it all goes through and you end up with quite a lot of profit. What would you do with that money? I would like to reinvest uh, uh, with John uh, and you know just continue to grow or uh, some of it uh, you know like to keep doing my uh, asset building uh, uh, and building my little portfolio on the side as well. How are you feeling right this minute? Uh, a bit nervous, <laughs> not going to lie. This is the final, you know, you have to be just bringing your best you can and then hopefully uh, that will be enough. Very best of luck. Thank you so much, Amy. We've now got Elise coming in. She's done the most amazing pack. <laughs> she I certainly mean, has. That puts it's very to, detailed. That puts mm -hmm. me to shame. I think it puts you two to shame as well, I should think. <laughs> and you two are very I've organized. never seen you anything. Well, if you had, it wouldn't be as good as this. I mean, have you seen how good it is? It's fantastic. Elise, welcome back. Thank you. Um, if you would like to explain the deal to us and then we'll ask you yep. the necessary questions we think are <laughs> okay. relevant. So uh, the property I have chosen is a mixed use class unit. The ground floor is a retail uh, used to operate as a coffee and the upper floor is already an existing two bedroom uh, unit but it's slightly under the 61 square meter uh, size. There has been a planning uh, approved to change of use of the ground floor and the basement to create a two bedroom uh, residential unit and also to do some extension and the back and the mansard roof and like enlarge the existing upper floor uh, two bedroom flat with some amenity space outside being a roof terrace. Uh, the property is situated a quarter of a mile from uh, the center of Wandsworth and about a quarter of a mile from uh, Earthfield main railway station, uh, which serves uh, Clapham Junction and uh, London Waterloo, so very good access. The unit is located uh, within uh, a mixed street scene of residential units, uh, offices and uh, other uh, uh, mixed uh, shops. It's not in a conservation area uh, and the cafe actually has been vacated since September 2022. So, I chose this uh, unit because planning has just been uh, approved mm. uh, for the conversion and uh, uh, looking at the neighboring sites, it looked like, uh, you know, this is what most of the uh, neighboring properties have been uh, doing. Property was on the market for offers in 625,000. However, I looked back, it was purchased by a limited company in August 2021 for 345. Well. So I thought that... Uh, even giving them 20% year on year increase uh, around the 513,000 purchase, they still win. And uh, oh, they've always got the planning, yeah. haven't they? Based on my, uh, I was using a slightly uh, lower square foot rate for uh, the end value 725 in the pack that are like the sold uh, comparables between 759 per square foot or 789. Yep. Uh, with the 725, uh, my return on cost would be around 22.27 return on GDV 18. However, if I'm using the higher uh, square foot prices uh, and you know, if, if we're lucky to have the 789 uh, uh, per square foot, then you could get up to 31% on uh, uh, okay. GDV. What I would say with London, you know, it's hard. I, I like 30% net profit on cost, as you know, 35% if I can get it. But in London, I do appreciate that's harder to do. Um, and it's balanced out really by the fact that there's a lot more buyers and, and, and all the rest of it. So you, you know, you, you pay your money and takes your choice, to be honest with you. Um, Kirsty. How long has it been on the market for? Uh, it hasn't been on the market for uh, too long. It's only just uh, about a month, so. Okay. Okay. So do you think they're open to offers at this point? Uh, have to wait and see. I think there uh, may be uh, an offer on the table already. So, but uh, you know what happened? I have seen it when I was looking for a deal that uh, many uh, prospect buyers went in, offered, and then they just walked away because when they did the due diligence, it didn't. I think that's stop. happening yeah. an awful lot at the moment. So, I mean, uh, with the state agency, and I've got some estate agents in, in Norfolk. We work on a third. In a tough market like this, we work on a third of the sales falling through, a third. 
So you're absolutely right. You know, just because there's an offer, keep chasing it, keep chasing it. It's amazing. And with development, this type of thing is probably more like 50% fall through, I'd say. Yeah, definitely. Um, and uh, I identified uh, one unit which is not on the market, but in the same area, mm. uh, has been in the same ownership for over 30 years. So mm. probably he is thinking of retirement soon. So I sent a letter and then waiting to hear back too. Okay, yes. okay. smart. Okay. So um, what would be the options for exiting this so so the primary to? strategy would be to uh, like convert to sell because the market is still quite strong uh, there were 50 sales within a quarter of my radius last year i did do some uh, costing on uh, rental what could be achievable and uh, you know the rental figures are not as high as so my prime exit would be to uh, develop and sell and then the seller it's a seller's market at the moment and how long did you, would you think that development would take? I talked to an architect and, uh, you know, some uh, builders. I know three, six months, but I allowed the 12 months and included in all my costing. Yeah. Have you thought about just going and trying to find something like this before the planning is granted? Because they're going to make nearly 300000 in so the a year. One which is close by is off market and it doesn't have a planning. So that's what I'm pursuing. And you'll spend a year, all the hassle, all the aggravation, all the risk to make less than they're going to make from that planning uplift? I mean, it's all risk and reward, isn't it? So yeah. if you haven't got planning and you've got a good planning consultant uh, and you think you can get planning, you, you, you deserve to make more money because you've taken that extra risk. Uh, this is less risk, which I don't mind. It doesn't, it doesn't bother me. What bothers me is, is to think that you can convert it and sell it within 12 months because mm -hmm. that's far too tight. Do you think so? Okay. I do. That's and the problem is that has a knock-on effect on mm. obviously interest. You know, on even on a small job like this, we, we look at two years. And then if it's sooner than that, it's a bonus. And it, hopefully it should be sooner, 18 months on, I think, probably. But I, 12 months is very tight. And I think your finance costs are a bit light, actually, at 85,000. Uh, I allowed uh, 10% on the total uh, cost. So subtotal was 851. Uh, Refurbishment was priced at 125 square foot for the 1,379. Then yeah. for the new build, uh, 200 square foot. And for the basement, uh, I allowed 45 pounds because you can't develop the basement. Just going to paint the walls. Yeah. <laughs> very good. Very sensible. So the refurbishment per square foot, do you think that's a bit light? I did speak to uh, an architect who is doing a uh, fair enough HMO conversions, but they are operating in London area. He did seem that this is realistic. Well, you can't do any more than that, to be fair to you. I, yeah. I think that's like you do as well. Don't you, yeah, that but comes with opinion. experience. You know. and, and at the end of the day, um, if you can let me have his or her phone number afterwards, I'll, I've got some work for them. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so we'll see. So um, what would you have uh, uh, costed at, just so I'm learning? You know, uh, for the finance, at least uh, another six months. So, so yeah, plus yeah. it doesn't look like there's much fees in there either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can have 1% in, 1% yeah. out, you know, in terms solicitors of fees solicitors' fees for the financials, unless you've added that to your other legals. But you've only got £5,000 for your legals, so yeah. it doesn't look like that. Bit, a bit light, but... but um, and, yeah, and I wouldn't right. normally get so... Wound up Technic by. no no technical in, in a pitch, <laughs> but you've not got a lot of margin on your return on GDV because you're only at eighteen percent. So if the winds change even slightly, there's just not that much grace. Yes, I, I did. However, uh, mention earlier that my seven hundred twenty-five is the lower end. So if in the pipe yes. that is seven, what if the market goes down? But you're talking about you know when you've underestimated the GDV. Mm. because you could have got a better pricing. What about if we get a bit of more softening going on this year, and it goes down? you know, minus I think you 5% always, or 10%. Yeah, I agree entirely. I, I, I'm looking at everything and, and taking 10% off it now. Okay. Because the market is tough. It's tough out there. But being tough, having a tough market is good for us. If you're mm. my partner, that's good. You know, a bit of blood on the streets, we call it. That's good. We want that. We, we, we've got to get in and buy these things at the right money. Um, so that, that, that is interesting. Kirsten? If you weren't successful in winning today and working with John, is this a deal you would move forward with? 
uh, I would use the uh, plans and then try to negotiate on the one which is off market, so there is no uh, nobody in, in for me. So the one that hasn't got the planning granted yes, yet, but it's, 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 it's off similar. Market, yeah, yeah, because like you have that. the template yeah. of what. We yeah, should go I agree. And and on this deal, it, I always like an out before I have an in. So I always like to de-risk, and I want to know what we can do if it all goes wrong. So what can we do with this if it goes wrong? If we can't sell them for what we want. What's the next option? Uh, I did look at the, the rentals, but I did say that in terms of uh, uh, rental achievable, I think for a two bedroom in the area, about 2,100 per calendar month. So mm -hmm. it could have only give about 3.6% return on uh, money left in if we refinance the 60%. However, I did calculate that if we were to find a tenant buyer, so then you could have a little bit of- And you uh, wouldn't get 60% with that kind of yield. No. Uh, with a tenant buyer, you could uh, get up to about 10% because you don't have the cost of like maintenance and then they will look after it as they were already. But then you're risking off if the market moves in the positive yeah. direction. Yeah. I do like that you include a capital allowances though. The fact that you've thought about it, yeah. you've got a provisional amount and actually it'd be quite a significant amount actually if you can, if you, can ex you know, succeed with that. So yeah. that's good. Did, where did you get that kind of advice from? Did you? Uh, so I had, uh, you know, one SA unit. I know it's different. And I spoke to the surveyor, what could be the estimated capital allowance. He was working at 30%. I only allowed like 25%, again, being conservative on. Yeah. And um, did you, have you con contacted the agent that's selling this? Yeah, yeah, I have spoken uh, and asked the whether agents. the, the yeah. allowances and are available. And they said they are not aware of that it has been claimed before. So mm. that's how I base my numbers. Mm. Is the property elected for VAT, do you know? No, it isn't. Okay, you did check. Yeah, I did check the council tax as well. What's the business rate? Uh, how much you can claim under relief? So that's all factored into my... Yeah. Okay, good. Because that trips a lot of people up with commercial properties potentially being elected I was uh, actually thinking when I looked the other day as I heard uh, you know on a quick trainer that you could buy some of the commercial units if it's owned by a limited company you can buy the limited company and yes. then you pay yeah. less time duty so I looked at the option in yeah. case this could yeah, be something but that, here that, but it's let not me give you some advice about limited companies and, and uh, Z's not here our accountant is oh. here to <laughs> advise but buying a limited company that's that's already in use if you like there's so much due diligence that's required. You don't know what's happened, you know, in the past with it. I never, ever, ever buy a limited company of someone because you never know what the problems are. Someone might have fallen down the stairs three years ago, uh, one of their tenants, and then you, you, the company gets sued, you know, all sorts of things. So be very, very careful buying limited companies in my view. Yeah, um, but you can get warranties for some things like that. You but can, yeah. but I mean, but if the you, want you get the, the warranty of someone, you've given them a couple of million pounds and they move to Australia, good luck getting it. Yeah. Hey, you'll be but back in Australia to... by then, <laughs> won't you, Fiona? So, I, I you know, you can't... look that for, uh, yeah. you know, companies where you only have like the one asset, so I even so, care home. I still you don't... Do you know what? I still don't trust them. Okay. I wouldn't do it. Good advice, thank you. Kirsty. I was just looking at a stamp duty and trying to, because I don't have a calculator next to me, trying well, to calculate whether you're it was right or not. I know it's not, it's not, it's not working. It's not working. <laughs> yeah, I, it's I've a tiered it uh, approach, but it actually comes to like 3% effective rate. So I did uh, use You did the, use yeah. the tiered rate. Okay, that was, that was my good. question. Good answer. Right good answer. Well done. Fiona? <laughs> well, I'm just getting, looking at the business rates because they've obviously just had new ratings through. Yeah. And you were on, you know, 12 and a half. I'm just uh, wondering if you've thought about that and your carrying costs for that you know, 12 to 18 months that you'd be? Uh, so I, uh, in my mind, I was, if I apply for like a, a small business relief, because if I set up a new limited company to yeah. have this unit, then yes. you can apply for the relief. And then I allowed, uh, uh, I think a thousand eight hundred pounds for the 12 months. That's because if I apply for the small business uh, relief, then I don't have to pay plus the council. But, but if it's been it. used up before, don't, isn't that a I'm never quite sure with that. But. You should be able to delist it because you're yeah. developing it. So if you're, if you're yeah. actually converting it, um, just make a mess as fast as possible. Send yeah. the photos to the VOA same and say, day. we need to delist this. Strip it the same day. That's, that's the best way. Yeah. Yeah. That's the it. simplest it's, way and then it's done. It out. Yeah. Yeah. And my business partner loves going and making a mess on day one yeah. for that reason. Um, Excellent. So, yeah. Send to anyone who joins. Uh, thank you. Know, this is a great. Uh, how many deals did you look th look through? I looked through uh, hundreds. Hundreds. It was, uh, a big care home with multiple options, building lens, but the build cost just didn't stock anyhow. 
Uh, and what was the standout reason you selected this one to bring? Uh, because I felt like the market was quite strong in terms of like reselling it on the other areas. I felt there wasn't much comparables. And uh, I know that you were saying that I should have allowed longer time. But after speaking with the architect, you know, I thought like the time frame quick in and out. Yeah, it could no, I, 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 I don't disagree with what with your thinking, to be honest with you. Yeah, I really, I really like um, the amount of detail you, mm. you provided to show us that very you have actually considered everything yeah. and it, yeah. it's very professionally presented. So, you know, well done for putting all that effort. Super. Um, Great. Good. Well, thank you very much. Thank we'll you so see much. you again very shortly. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Elise. How did it go? I was a bit nervous in, uh, you know, when I had my uh, session. Uh, there were a couple of uh, tough questions. It's all over. How are you feeling at the moment? Relieved that it's all over. Uh, and then uh, there is excitement to, you know, see who won 2023 uh, property graduate. But uh, it's good to be just, you have done everything you could. Elise, what do we think? Kirsty. Very professional. Um, mm. She's done her homework, as she had done yeah. in the all last the, all two the way rounds. Through, all the way has, through, yeah. she... She mm. teaches herself what she needs to know mm. and she makes sure she's got the answers. I, I like that about her. I mean, she won the award for the biggest pack of the yes. three yes. contestants. <laughs> that doesn't always impress me. No, that doesn't always impress me, as you know, Fiona. It's <laughs> not always the answer, is it? No. I, like, I mean, I've liked her ever since the yes. first round. No, I, I don't disagree. Um, well, let's, uh, we're going to have a cup of coffee now and then we're going to have another chat, aren't we, and decide. Uh, I'm going to decide with your help and all your wealth of experience you've both got us who should be the property graduate 2023. So the big deliberation, what am I going to do? Come on ladies, help me out here. Uh, where should we start? Let's start with Victoria. What do we think? Can I work with her? I think confident, articulate, but maybe a little bit weak in some of the areas I'd be uh, a bit concerned about how much work she'd need to do to get to the right price, the kind of deal she'd be looking at. I'm just not. I thought she lacked a bit of confidence today and mm. she wasn't as bullish as no, she wasn't, I, agree. I, I really like expected her to be, yeah. which I think she's, she's come down from extremely bullish to the other end of the scale, yeah. which shows that she it's can operate at both. But a bit timid, yeah. I, I like her energy. I can you toughen her up? I think we can toughen her up. <laughs> I think we can toughen her up. Molly has some experience behind her. I don't think she'd need a great deal of support. She'd be out there looking at deal. If you gave her the right steer, yeah. these are the criteria. She'll go, she'll go and find you the deal. She's very diligent. I think she's thorough and diligent. Uh, somewhat uh, quiet, but I mm. think she'd do quality work. She, she would... Um, a pack I could I would have liked to see laid out a little different. I think with a bit of adjustment, she yeah. could send you things very efficiently to review. Yeah. I don't know personality wise if she would be the best fit because she is very quiet. I think you might like a bit more debate. Well, a bit, yeah, but... I don't. I mean, at the end of the day, if they're good at what they do, they're good at what they do. I think um, she's the sort that you sort of make her aware of your criteria. You yeah. wouldn't hear from her, and then she'd bring mm. you a cracking deal five months yeah, later. Yeah, me too. Again, likeable. People have to be likeable. If you want to find a deal, you know, you're, you're both characters, you know, you've got that personality that's required. Have these people, has she got the personality to be talking to agents and blagging them and this, that and the other? Oh, is that an old fashioned way of doing it? Am I just a bit of a dinosaur, you know? But that's how, on the whole, you get deals by people you know. Elise, what do we think? I, I like Elise. I've liked her right from the start. Mm. I was glad that she made it to the final. Yes. I thought she's, uh, I'm going to say slow and steady, but I think she's steady Eddie. I think she's uh, mm. did a reasonably good pack. Uh, and I think she would also be someone that could work with you. A very bright lady. Yeah. Very intelligent, clearly. And, and her backstory is very impressive. I've now got to decide, haven't I? which one is going to be the property graduate 2023. Welcome back in <laughs> to the room. This is always the most difficult part of the whole show. You know, we start off with so many applicants and now we're down to three. Three become two, two become one. Any one of you could win this. 
any one of you is good enough to work with John this year, you've all excelled yourself today with your deals and what you brought to us. Yeah, I think I think that's right, don't you, Kirsty? Yeah, absolutely. Attention to detail. Yeah, it's been very good. Very well prepared, well presented. So all of you did a great job. I've had, you know, great conversations with both of you, haven't we? Yeah. Over lunch and everything else. And, and it's been very, very, very tough. But I have made a decision. Elise, you've done very, very well to get this far, but unfortunately, um, I'd like you to leave now. Thank you. Three become two. Such a difficult decision. Molly, you've got probably more experience than Victoria. Victoria, you've got that energy and that enthusiasm. Molly's got that in a more quieter, more subdued way, but, but it's very similar in many ways. Um, you know, you don't have to be out there shouting about it. You just quietly get on with it, which is which I really like. Victoria, in the first round, you were very ballsy. Second round, not quite so ballsy. Third round today, a bit quieter. I think you know that there were things that you could have improved on your, your pitch today. And Molly, I think the same with you. I think there are things that perhaps you hadn't thought of. Uh, but I've made a decision. My property partner and the property graduate 2023 is going to be Victoria. Well done. Incredibly close. Congratulations on winning property graduate 2023. Thank you. Going through three grueling rounds. That's an amazing achievement. Love to give this award to you. Thank you very much. You deserve it, especially surviving this man behind me. <laughs> You've done well, and you're going to enjoy Thanks. the journey with him. Believe me, you will. This is just the start, Victoria. Yep. You know that, and we've got a lot of hard work ahead of us. But it will be fun, and uh, there will be a profitable deal at the end of it. I'm sure. I'm excited. Here it is. I know. You won it. I know. How do you feel? Oh, shell shocked. I mean, did you think you were going to win it? I think you have to come into the final believing that you could, otherwise what's the point? But the other two girls were so good. I was kind of like, I would love to win, of course. If I don't, like I would lose to credible competitors. So I just didn't know. You've all been very friendly, which has been nice. It feels like you've supported each other through this process and, and, and into the final as well. Yeah, that's been really nice. And that's been such an amazing thing to take away from this is like the camaraderie with the other girls it's been really nice. And how do you feel about having John as your new business partner? That's oh, I can't wait. Amazing. I don't think he knows what he's in for, but I, I'm really buzzing. Yeah, I'm really excited. The new chapter? Yes, definitely. Really excited. Gonna go conquer the world together. <laughs> and buy some Louboutin shoes. Oh, oh, I have to. I've told you I'm gonna do it now. So yeah, next time I see you, I'll have to wear them. Well, congratulations. Thank you so much. Do you think you have what it takes to become John's next property graduate? Applications for Property Graduate 2024 are now open and you can apply at propertygraduate.tv. We'll see you then. Property Graduate is proudly sponsored by Surtax Accounting.